Welcome to Roby Tech and another of our DIY videos. The show where we like to keep you up to date with as much as we can in the PC and gaming world. To say I am a little excited about this would be an understatement as we got our hands on an engineering sample of the latest Ghost Canyon Nook model NUC9i9QNX. Woohoo! That was a mouthful. Now for people who are unfamiliar with the Intel Nook, they haven't really hit what I would consider mainstream among gamers and many PC enthusiasts. However, at CES, both Razer with their Tomahawk concept and Cooler Master with their NC100 case showed that these new modular design in the latest iteration of Nook may be what it takes for these little powerhouses to make it to the limelight. Now, when I got my opportunity to check these things out at CES for myself, I was more than a little stoked about the possibility. Fast forward to today and here on the table right here, just a couple weeks post CES, we here at Robitech get our first glance into the potential that this small but power device that I'm looking at has and what it can do. Now, before we get to putting things together, I wanted to go over what is in the NUC 9i9QNX, or I'm gonna call it the Nook 9. This is one of three models that's available with an NUC 9i7 and an NUC 9i5, which both have Intel's 9th gen mobile CPU in either the i9, i7, and i5 flavor. Now the one we have here is the i9-9980HK from Intel, which is currently Intel's most powerful mobile CPU on the market. The CPU was built on Intel's latest 14 nanometer process, has a base clock speed of 2.4 gigahertz and a booster turbo clock of up to five gigahertz. Now like its desktop counterpart, the 9980HK has 16 megabytes of Intel smart cache, has eight cores and 16 threads, but only has a TDP of 45 watts compared to the up to 95 watts that the i9-9900K gets. That TDP difference, which is suited for mobile processors, is what makes this bad boy lag behind in performance slower base clock speed and shorter boosting due to thermal throttling when you compare this to the big boy i9-9900K. I just wanted to set some expectations prior to this because though this is a 9th gen Intel CPU, it's not gonna match one to one with the desktop beast you are used to using. However, it's important to note that this is no slouch. No, 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 no. This is still going to be one hell of a PC with simplicity unmatched when you compare to the amount of work it will take to get something more powerful in a form factor just as small as this in a five liter case. Now just to set it in perspective, this is still more powerful than a gaming PC that you could build around a Ryzen 7 2700X, second gen Ryzen, with the same configuration, or about 85% of the power you would get if you did this in the same config with an i9-9900K. Now that we know what's at the core of the PC, what exactly can you put into this little five liter enclosure? It supports up to two 110 millimeter in length M.2s, which no one really uses yet, and a third up to 80 millimeter length, which is the size of most M.2s, 2280s. So making it have up to three 2280 size M.2 drives. It can support either 32 gig max of DDR4 2666 or 64 gigs of DDR4 at 2400 megahertz. Finally, and this is the coolest part, it can support up to an eight inch double wide PCIe 16 discrete GPU, or you can use the onboard Intel UDH graphics and put something like an Elgato HD 60 Pro or 4K 60 and have a portable streaming PC you can take with you on the go. The other thing worth noting is the amount of IO that this thing has in it, which is just a tad bit insane. In fact, we got two Thunderbolt 3 connectors. Yes, for either display or awesome Thunderbolt 3 applications like storage. We got an HDMI 2.0A for display purposes. And we have six, one, two, three, four, five, six, USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports. And finally two, and I do mean two, boom, count them, server grade Intel gigabit internet ethernet ports. And oh right, we could also uh, have a full SD size slot there to boot. So quite a bit of connectivity in this little beastly case already. So what are we gonna put into this build, you might ask? Well, here's what we're doing. Well, first, another awesome uh, announcement from CES, we're gonna be putting in the new EVGA RTX 2060 KO Gaming. This little beast right here has 1680 megahertz boost clock, six gigabytes of GDDR6, and comes in a length of 7.96 inches. Phew. Is that a coincidence? I think not. When you think about the fact that this thing only fits an eight inch enclosure and this is 7.96, you think maybe these two things work together? Hmm. Now for M.2s, we're gonna be throwing in three of these Western Digital Black one terabyte M.2 SSDs because why not? They're Western Digital Black, plenty fast. They're gonna be amazing. And then finally for RAM, 
We're gonna be putting in 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 at 2666 in a two x eight SODIM configuration. Outside of putting a 2060 KO Ultra in this thing, it's about the most powerful version of the Ghost Canyon Intel Nook 9 i9 QNX you could do prior to the new smaller form factor graphics cards that are probably coming out. Now that I've given you all the relevant information, I think, I mean, I can, I can finally build this PC. Now I've had this thing since Thursday of last week and I've been waiting patiently to do this and put it through its paces. So let's get to building. So what do we need? Simple, all the pieces you see here that I've laid out so beautifully on my table. This is pretty much it. Oh, and uh, one screwdriver. I'm expecting this to change the landscape somewhat when it comes to building a PC like this of your own, because hopefully, as you will get to see, the process is incredibly easy because the motherboard in this is cool. It's just a little enclosure that's already put together, and I'll show you here in a few minutes. So, let's get to building. Okay, let's take this thing apart. This is the cooling unit right here. Again, these are the connectors, and then it connects to these little gold fingers here in the back. These just basically pop off. The Ghost Lake has the skull. So this is basically the, without the case on, as you can see. Lord God, look at the size of that tiny screw. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna take this little bit off. Here are our two cable connectors. We got basically two eight pins right here. And hopefully we get a 2080 Ti in just eight inches that you can put inside of this. But the cool thing is, is like with the Tomahawk and the NC100 case that are gonna be coming out, those support full length uh, GPUs. Uh, we're gonna be taking this apart here in just a few seconds, but this is actually the PC. And then you can see it's got a four lane and uh, basically full PCIe by 16. We're gonna install the RAM. We basically pull this apart and we're gonna start disconnecting all of these little power cables here. These are your Wi-Fi antennas. So we disconnected those, kind of put those off on the side. Gen 3.1 USB-C connector, front panel connector. And then we've got a couple more connectors there. Now, unscrew this. There we go. Looks like there's like six total cables that are plugged into that. So there's another little tiny screw. So there's one right there. There's that one. And then there's a little one. Oops, let's not talk. To, just touch, not touch the bottom. Little one right here. There we go. There we go. Now the whole unit is disconnected. Cool. This right here, when we talk about it, this is a fully modular PC. When you look at the Tomahawk or you look at the NC100 that's coming out from Cooler Master, this is actually the whole PC that you're gonna be put inside of. So you can basically slap this in, connect the same cables that we have here, hook up another discrete GPU, like a full 2080 in the case of that, or in this case, we're gonna be putting in the 2060. Reason I took this out here though, is I actually have to put the CPU and RAM in. Okay, so we're gonna unscrew this, unscrew that. And then this just basically, then this goes around like that. And there you go. So this is the inside of the actual Intel Nook. Uh, this is actually the processor right here. So that is your, I, your i9-9980HK. Uh, these are where we're gonna put our RAM. And then these, like I support, said, support two, either 110 or 80. So we're gonna be filling both of these with Western Digital Black uh, 2280. Uh, one terabyte M.2s. And then this down here is where we're gonna put in our Corsair uh, DDR4 2x16 2666 megahertz RAM. We wanted to make sure we use the fastest RAM, so we're only using 32 gigs versus 64 gigs at 2400 megahertz.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is it. From beginning to end, I'm guessing that this took, I don't know, maybe 40 minutes? Probably even less than that if you really just kind of focus on. That was with us cutting to do good shots and all that sort of stuff. Simply plugged it in, put in a uh, Windows OS USB stick, and boom, I got Windows running. We're up and going. We're downloading uh, Call of Duty because we're going to make sure we're uh, running a 2060 game. That's going to be the first thing. Anyway, guys, we're going to be doing a whole nother video on uh, basically doing some uh, high-level benchmarks in terms of how this thing is going to run. But as you can hear, it is super quiet right now. You can hardly hear anything. Actually, check this out right here. There you go. Look at it. You got our Intel 9th Gen CPU, 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, we got our RTX 2060. This thing is a beast in this small package. Anyway, guys, next step for us, checking this out. But what did you guys think? Simply Nook thought that you guys shouldn't be able to do this on your own. Do you agree? Let us know in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, be sure to slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a new video. Also, head on over to our mixer.com slash roby one Kenobi, where you can check out our live show every Wednesday from uh, 7 p.m. to uh, 9 p.m. Pacific time. Also, be sure to drop us a follow over at Twitter and Instagram at roby one Kenobi. Check us out over on Facebook, or have your parents check us out over at Facebook at facebook.com slash RobyTech. Thank you so much for watching. Now go build your own nook. Uh, we're going to go uh, play with ours a little bit more. See you guys later. Hashtag beefy cores.